For 15,000 years at least, man revered the moon as a source of light, as a navigational guide, as a reference in agricultural pursuits, and most of all, as a convenient timekeeper. In the days before our modern systems, timekeeping was no simple task. Early timekeepers had two choices. They could monitor the sun or the moon. If you think about trying to keep track of dates, if you use a solar calendar like we do nowadays, there are 365 days in a year, and that's an awful lot of days to keep track of. And it's not something that the ordinary per person can do very well. Compare that with a lunar calendar. Everybody can tell when the full moon is, when the new moon is. You don't see the moon at new moon. You see it as big and round at full moon, so it's easy to tell. There are only 28 to 29 days in a lunar cycle, so it's easy to count them. And so most societies actually start out with a lunar calendar. Early observers of the moon also recognized that our planetary neighbor has a very real physical effect on the Earth itself. The moon is responsible for the rise and fall of our ocean tides. If we think of the moon as being this tennis ball and the earth as being this football, okay, the, the tides are caused by the moon's attract, gravitational attraction. So it's obvious, okay, so the moon kind of pulls the earth's water towards it. And so this creates a slight bulge in the direction of the moon. What's less obvious is there's also a bulge in the direction away from the moon. So there is, in fact, two high tides every day. The other high tide you can think of as being caused by the Earth's centripetal force. The Earth and the Moon are both rotating around, and that causes the water on the far side to also move out. An extreme illustration of the difference between high and low tides can be found along the shore of Canada's Bay of Fundy. The water level from high tide to low tide drops an astounding 55 feet. For some forms of life on Earth, the advance and retreat of the tides creates useful habitats. But another 